Hello and welcome to this CATIA Prismatic Machining video. Uh, today we're going to continue on with a series of videos where we've been uh, creating machining operations for producing the part that you see in front of you. Uh, if we quickly look at the tree, you'll see the state that the part is in right now. There are several operations that have been created. And what we're going to look at today is a little bit more in-depth on the approach and retract macros that you need to set up to ensure that uh, the tool approaches the material correctly, doesn't wrap it into it, and it retracts away from the material after <coughs> you're finished a particular step or operation. Uh, to do this, what we're going to do is look at one of these operations. Um, I'm going to dive right in here and pick a pocketing operation, which is pocketing two. So if you've been following along with the previous uh, tutorials, uh, you should have a part that has this pocketing two operation in it. It's, a, it's the operation right after the profiling under the tool change to the two quarters inch end mill. So let's go ahead and open up this pocketing operation. And uh, again, the five tabs on the top here are the tabs that you visit. Typically, the second tab is the one that you would get into if you haven't defined any geometry for your operation. And then you would proceed to the right looking at the tool, then the operation parameters, and then the fifth tab is where you get to set the approaches and retract macros. And this is what we're going to look at today. If you remember from the previous video, we did set these. Uh, in, in that video, what we did is we decided that we were going to set our approach and retract to a move that is 0.3 inches in length. And it's axially, that means it's moving up directly along the tool axis. Now, why, why did we set it to 0.3? Well, because with a 0.75 end mill, we've been setting our depth of cut to 200 thousandths. What this means is that the tool, because of the approach of 0.3, it's going to stop 100 thousandths above the top of the part, and it's going to switch into the feed, the approach feed rate, as it feeds downwards to the depth of cut. Now, the approach feed rate, as you should remember, is set on the fourth tab. You can see it here, set to 8 inches per minute. So that's why we set it at point 0.3, so that the tool always stops with some distance before it gets to the top of where the material is. Um, the retract has also been set to the same. Um, even though with retract, you can pull away quickly, providing you don't have an overhang to hit the tool into. And we've done this over and over again for different groupings of approaches and retracts. You recall that when you set your macros, there are different um, approaches and retracts one can do depending on whether you are doing a finishing pass as you can see here there is an approach and a retract pair that deals with finishing passes or if you're moving between levels as you can see there's a, a uh, approach and retract pair there for um, setting the approaches and retracts as the tool moves between different levels and so on um, in this example here, we've set everything, as you can see as I click my mouse through these different options, um, except for the linking approach and linking attract, we've set everything to be just this 0.3 inch um, uh, axial motion. For the linking between, the linking retract and approach, we've set this up to the clearance plane. So if I click on linking approach, you'll see the picture is a little bit different here, and we have a plane and by clicking on this we selected a plane which you can see over here this macro plane so th so the tool will lift up to that plane as it links between different oper um, pocketing operations so i'm going to play around a little bit with this um, just to show you a couple more options um, so i'm going to go into the approach and i'm going to just delete this i'm going to start off with a clean slate i'm also going to delete the retract and i'm going to just work my way all the way through I'm going to just uh, deactivate the clearance and then let's just delete everything here. Just so that we have a clean slate to start off with. And we're going to try something a little bit different in terms of how we execute our approaches and retracts. So let's go back to the very beginning. This here is our approach and retract um, at the start of the operation and then the retract at the end of the operation. So between the start and the end, there may be many tool paths, many levels at which you machine, or many passes that you have to work through. And this is the approach at the beginning, this is the retract at the end. Now previously we used the axial motion to move up 0.3. This time we're going to do something different and we're going to use a helical um, approach move as well as a helical retract move. So I'm going to go ahead and select a helical motion 
and this picture here kind of exaggerates what what that helix is going to look like you probably don't want to be um, moving the tool in on several turns but um, it kind of serves the purpose there are two parameters here that one wants to set one is the parameter for the radius of the helix and the other is the length of the of the actual height of the helix that one is going to use so I'm going to start off with um, changing the radius I'm going to just use a let's set this to a 0.5 radius and this is the radius of the tool pad by the way and then the approach move I'm going to leave this at 0 0.3 so again you want to make sure that the height or the vertical safety distance is greater than the depth of cut to prevent the tool from rapiding into the work um, workpiece and then I'm going to go to the retract option and again I've removed it so there's nothing here I'm going to in this case there isn't a helical um, retract so in this case I'm going to just go back and reinsert the axial motion and set this back to point 3 so it doesn't really make sense to, to use a helical move out of a uh, during a retract it, 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 it's what you'd use to do an approach let's regenerate the toolpad and see what that does for us it should show us something slightly different it may be hard to pick up at first I can see it there I'm going to just rewind to the start of the toolpad and reorient the model a little bit and then again I'm still in the level by level replay so I'm going to step forward and what you can see there if you look closely I'm going to zoom in is this move here and this is this helical move 0.5 radius and a 0.3 depth so the tool is actually moving in on a helix ramping into the material instead of plunging directly down so that's uh, that's been set and then we can go through and do the same thing for all our approach moves um, if we want to so let's go ahead and just um, again our retract move can be just that axial move again so maybe I didn't need to delete all of these previously I'm just going to reset them back quickly and the linking approach um, in this case for the linking um, approach I'm going to just leave it uh, up to clearance plane let's do the return and level retract we're going to use an axial motion again to a point three return in a level approach. So this is an approach move so I'm going to remove this and I'm going to set a helical approach using a radius again of 0.5 and a depth of 0.3. The finish for your retract the retract for your finish sorry again an axial move of 0.3 and then the finish we are going to remove this axial motion and add a helical motion again with a radius of 0.5 and a depth or vertical safety distance of 0.3 and then finally between levels so this is when the tool drops down from one level to another we're going to again use a axial retract move of 0.3 make sure we get it up above the top of the material and to return between levels um, we're going to remove this and set this to an axial uh, sorry a helical approach with a radius of 0.5 and a vertical safety distance of 0.3 so let's go ahead and generate our tool pads and um, you can see that there's a lot more curved yellow in your tool pad display and those are your helical lead-in moves and it's kind of hard to see this very clearly with all the tool pads so that's why the plane by plane option is really useful so again I rewind it to the beginning of the tool pad and then I'm going to step forward so this is the first level it's not a complete level but um, you'll see in a second that the tool lifts at the end of this moves to another region so here's the helical lead-in then the, the tool is down at depth and it cuts it then lifts up so you can see the retract move here repositions and then it uses another helical move to get back down to depth now that first 
the tool pad probably didn't remove much so this second helical tool pad is really important because what it does is it reintroduces the tool or re-engages the tool with the material. And let's look at a couple more. So here I have a the tool again lifting up. You can see it here. Rapiding over and then it's again engaging back into material. So I'm making sure that with that point 0.3 lift it gets up above the material because remember the top of the material is pretty much where the top of this part is right now. So you can see the tool lifts above, rapids over and then it uses the point, uh, sorry, the 8 inches per minute feed rate along the helix to get back into material. Here's a retract move <coughs> in blue, rapid, rapid down and it's rapiding down again to the start of an engage move and this is the second level so now the tool is dropped down now to 0.4 below the top uh, the first pass was at 0.2 you can see a lot more machining is done with the tool down in this case and at the end of this the tool is going to lift back up and this looks like a a return within a level move because the tool is lifting up and it's repositioning within a level um, but it's still using an engage helix using a, f a feed rate of 8 inches per minute. So this kind of gives you the idea of how uh, the how the helical tool approach works and I would encourage you to you know consider using it. Certainly the axial move works um, but a helical lead-in is a lot uh, lighter on the tool, a lot less force a lot less jarring of the tool, a lot less jarring of the machine. Um, one thing you have to be careful about is making sure that the helical lead-in doesn't run the tool into walls. So one would need to check and make sure that that is not the case. And of course the way you would do that is by doing a full simulation. Here I'm going to go to my video simulation and just run through that. I'm going to slow it down a bit. As slow as it can go, it actually goes pretty quickly even on slow. I'll just let it um, start doing that pocketing. You can kind of see some of the effect of the helical entrances here. You can see these helicoid surfaces that are generated because the tool is actually entering the material on a helix. There again, you can see it. Here's Here's a very good example here where you can see the effect of the tool entering on a helix into the material so it's not plunging right down, it's actually gradually moving into the material. And again, one wants to make s very sure that you're not going to be running one of those helical moves into any wall in your, in your, t in during the machining of that pocket. There we go. So this is one more uh, additional um, example of a type of lead-in that one can design. Um, there are other a range of other tools here that one has to play with. There are also some other interesting options here that are available, some canned options, and you're free to explore these. Uh, the general idea is that you select um, the toolpad that you want. You can actually string some of these together too. So if you wanted to add a helical an axial move on top of a helical move, one can do that too. So for example, if I were to click axial motion here, notice that it adds an axial motion to the end of the, or the beginning of the helical motion. Um, so one can string some of these together too to create fairly elaborate lead-ins and lead-outs depending on what one, one, one needed to do. Um, I'm going to just delete this because I don't need that. So I'm back to my helical lead-in, lead-out. I'm going to hit OK and uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and save my part and that's it for this particular video. Hope it helps you um, set up some very interesting approaches and retracts for your for your models.